The holy sacrifice of the mass, it's been under attack for at least seven, eight hundred years, depending on, on how you look at it. When you look at the arguments regarding the real presence, and especially as we move to the Reformation. I'm here again with Ryan Grant, and he has translated an excellent book by St. Robert Bellarmine. You can see it on the screen. It's titled On the Most Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. And it's a 300-page book, and the first 200 pages discuss uh, a defense of the Mass as a sacrifice, chief, chiefly as a sacrifice, of course, the real presence as well. But the last 100 pages, I think everyone's going to be really interested in because he looks at the Protestant reformers' arguments against the traditional Latin Mass, private Masses, Latin, the priest whispering, the Roman canon, the vestments, the vessels, the altar, all these things, and he, depend, he defends them on Scripture, antiquity, church fathers, etc. So this is going to be a really great show, especially if you like liturgy and the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. So, Ryan Grant, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. Bellarmine is fighting against the second wave of Protestants. So the first wave was just sort of rebelling against Catholicism in general. Then once the Protestants have the canons of Trent in their hands, they start writing books against every jot and tittle of Trent. And, and Bellarmine is, is now fighting that second wave, right? Mm -hmm. It's a, kind of a, a double down rebellion. Right. And the first one, too, but the principal work he's writing against in this book is Martin Chemnitz, who's a Lutheran. Right. I believe that's the correct pronunciation of his name. But anyway, um, so Chemnitz, in his work, um, a, an examination of the Council of Trent, which I know is in English. I'm not sure if it's still in print. But um, so, so all the different ways in which he's attacking Trent so that in terms of liturgy, and that's a lar largely what Bellarmine's responding to is the arguments that he brings forward, some of which are just recycled from Calvin. Whether the mass should be said in Latin, um, and there's an interesting one. That he, it's kind of, it's it's merely um, he rep he doesn't want to repeat too much because in the book on uh, on the sacraments in general, he has a lengthier section on the utility of Latin, and it's principally you know utility. He doesn't say that absolutely. And he notes, like for example, in the Eastern church, churches, the, the the Greeks obviously use Greek. They use uh, Syriac, which is Aramaic. They use that. And he even notes that uh, the Maronites use Arabic for the divine office in that time. So he says, you know, other languages can be sensed to be sacred languages. Uh, but then he notes the utility of having a sacred language. It's not constantly changing. And then he says heresies will not slip in, right, through the constant changing of words, whether by accident or by intention. And hmm, there's an interesting thought. And you got to, and there's a lot of wordings of things. You know, at one time um, when I was praying the you know divine office, one of the uh, the the liturgy of the hours, we, way back before I got rid of it, um, I was going through this one ISIL original text or something like that, and it says, you know, oh God who hates the rich and loves the poor. I was like, that's heretical. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not you know, <laughs> but it, it, that that's not. Right, and it's not in the official Latin either. It was something that they kind of added in sure. in one of these texts, you know. Um, or how about, and there's something else. the Lord be with you, and also with you. Right, yeah, and with you too, <laughs> bud. You know, which becomes mundane. Yeah, you know, or it, um, what was the old creed? It was one in being with the Father. Right, one in being, which, which is not consubstantial. consubstantial. Yeah. Right, it, it doesn't, it's, it's too ambiguous. Yeah, it see, could mean that, but it might not too. Sacred liturgical language is a force field that protects liturgy and sacred texts. Right. Because living languages change. For example, mm -hmm. the word cool 100 years ago would not mean if you're in a language, oh, that's cool. We'd be like, well, it's cold? Right. No, it's cool. Or like, I the like word it. about 200 years ago in English, the word embarrass would actually suggest that you were pregnant. Right. Because you were laden from the French, you know, yes. and then, but nowadays it no longer means that. So you're going to so, have to update your liturgical vernacular text every 20 years. Right. That's dumb. Pretty much. And, and not to mention expensive, too. Who's going to pay for all that? Well, right. you, conferences, bishops like that until they make coin. Yeah. Well, I know, because they own the companies that, yeah. uh, that produce all them. these books, and therefore, and, and everyone's got to buy them. Yep.